I made a promise, and now it's time to deliver. Hello, Emmett Ryan here from Ball in Europe, and it's my pleasure to once again join you all today. And as the cold open uh, indicates, this is indeed me fulfilling a promise to Fenerbahce fans. We are doing a roster breakdown for Fenerbahce today ahead of the Euro League season. It's only a couple of weeks away, folks. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. We've almost made it. So, yeah, we're going to go through the ins, the outs, what I think of some of the lineups, uh, what I think the outlook is for Fenerbahce. But before we get into all of that, please subscribe. The button is somewhere around there. And if you could, that would be a huge, huge help. But enough of that. Let's get into it. Oh, something from Lewis. What? They've done what? I just recorded the video. Oh, for goodness sake. Thanks, Lewis. Emergency edit here, as you can see from my crash landing and the Luca ball falling. Oh my word. But uh, I, I'm guessing the Luca ball is as shocked as anything. So the bulk of this video was recorded about two hours before it was announced that Fenerbahce have, of course, signed Boban Marjanovic. He was a free agent, obviously a good stint in the NBA, previously been in Euroleague or Carvena Zvezda. Serbian giant, uh, and generally just adorable, lovely giant man, but also quite good at basketball. So yeah, uh, so this section, I'm just going to use him in the ins, and he's obviously a good in. Uh, beat him up a bit on the front court, to put it mildly. So yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. We're also going to have a second edit coming up at the end of, not this section, the section after. But now, back to what I thought was everything that we needed to know before we recorded. So if you've watched my previous roster breakdowns, you'll know that we begin with the ins and the outs. Oh, you see previous roster breakdowns. That's right. The Zalgiris one should be somewhere in the corner right now. And there's also been a Zvezda one. That should be somewhere in the corner about now. Yes, those are deliberately paced to have five seconds go in between so the links come up separately. Sorry, Fenner fans. So yeah, uh, we're going to talk about the ins first. Uh, and I'm very high on the ins, is the short version. The players who have come in, Wade Baldwin IV, Bonzi Colson, Arthur Zagars, Nicolo Melli, Devon Hall, Ken Birch, and Erling Ghazi. The outs are Nick Kalathis, Amin Nua, Georges Papianis, Yamadar, Jonathan Motley, Nate Sestina, Tyler Dorsey, and Raul Neto. So, quite a lot of change. Uh, we are going to get to who stayed as well. Don't worry, Fenerbahce fans, we're not forgetting that. But let's talk about the changes first. Well, I'm looking at this and kind of go, well, obviously, Wade Baldwin, that's a home run. That's just out of the park. Like, we saw Baldwin be a legit contender for MVP, I believe, last year. Uh, his player performance in particular stood out. But, like, Baldwin has taken a step forward. Like, he, Baldwin's always talked a very good game. And... We always felt that, yeah, but okay, you're playing well, but we know there's more. And last year we saw the more, and the more was a lot. And Baldwin entered the echelon of what he had been describing. And of course, now he's got uh, Saras as his coach. He's got a probably, uh, okay, I will say a stronger lineup than he had last season uh, well, in what's around him. And But by and large, more importantly, he's, he's just got a lot to work with. And he's now, though, got a goal. And a target, as in the target's on his back, people are going, we can take you down. But the goal is really, well, I've shown a step up. Now can I be the MVP caliber, caliber player I believe myself to be? So yeah, love the Baldwin signing. Bonzi, obviously, worked with Wade last year. Great work rate. If you're not excited about Arthur Zagars coming finally to Fenerbahce, obviously, he spent that year on loan at BC Wolves, had his injury issues. Uh, we finally get to see him fit in there. I think Zagars, we know there's so much there, so much he can deliver. That's a great signing. And Melly coming home, also brilliant. Like Hall and Ghazi, not too much to say really there. Hall will be fine. He'll do a plenty. He'll get plenty of minutes, don't get me wrong. Ken Birch, obviously, there was a Lucas Salmonet situation, which is... So Salmonet has left Fenner, although Fenner are retaining his contract to the end of the season. and Or at least his rights, sorry, to the end of the season. I don't know the contract. That's not me trying to break news there, just to be clear. I just know they're retaining his rights to the end of the season. So Birch was signed instead. Probably would have preferred Salmonet, but Birch is still, obviously, a very capable operator at this level. So loving the ins. The outs. Kalath is... Like, I think Saras turned him around big time last year, and I would have loved to have seen another season of Saras and Kalathis in this Fenerbahce setup. But uh, again, not exactly have me, you know, going, ah, come on. And again, Papayanis, Madar, Motley. Uh, Papayanis, I feel, has developed a lot as a player, but 
He's not an enormous loss. He's a bigish loss, I think. Madar wasn't getting seen on the court, and Motley was showing up in the final four. Sestina, yeah, I think, you know, he was finding his, he'd found a good groove at Fenner. So maybe he's a bit of a, a bit of a loss. Dorsey as well, we know he can score, but he just seems to play better when he's with a Greek team. Uh, I don't think he was as good as he could be at Fenner. And uh, Neto as well, obviously he's a free agent now. So overall, I'm saying it's a net improvement. For a team that, remember, got to the Final Four last year, I believe they're better. Like, not enormously better, but definitely better. So... I have some thoughts about what this will mean for what we see on the floor from Fenerbahce. Fenerbahce have got more than enough players. We're going to mention the obvious one, uh, the, the man with a double barrel surname in a minute, to enable conventional five-man basketball, a conventional lineup, you know, a point guard, a shooting guard, PF, SF, center although i did say sf before pf when i should have like you know i didn't you know what i mean but they can do that the normal way i am loving the potential for mixing things up with this lineup there's baldwin and scotty wilbekin on the floor together just waiting for someone like zagars or hall to work with them in a three guard set you throw in Tarek bevarovic being able to play up a spot Likewise, Nicky, Nick, 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 Nicky, no one's ever called Nicola Melli, Nicky, he's Nick Melli. Likewise, Nick Melli or Bonzi Colson, they can also play up a spot. Like, you know, there's room to see Fenner bust out some small ball sets this season, and I'm really excited about that. Like, Saras obviously was an in-season arrival, and what I think he brought to the team above all else, which is kind of amusing given how, you know, chaotic he can seem on the sideline is, he brought a sense of order to the ball. Like, Fenner were far more disciplined side on the floor under Saras, far greater ball security, just far better at, like, you know, picking their opportunities, creating chances, and generally speaking, just looked better. And that was, of course, only in a half season. Like, obviously, Atulis had done a solid job there, but just things weren't working out in that season. The change happened. And, yeah, like, I'm thinking, right, okay, you've done that. Now here comes the hard part, because you were coming in to a team that needed a lift. How do you lift it again? And you got these new arrivals, and you've got this potential to bring some really, really fun new looks on the floor. You mix things up a bit. You change the dynamic of what Fenner can deliver. Like, you can alternate between a very big lineup. Like, not enormous, but a, you, can, you could realistically have some double big lineups there if you're willing to also move in some of those small ball lineups, which is not to be sniffed at. Like, there's stuff Fenner can do rotation-wise here which is really exciting to me. Like, I, I've been saying nice things about all teams I've done in the, ro in the rotation video, roster breakdown videos. The reason for that, to be honest, is the four teams I'm doing, uh, Partizan was the other one, their video is somewhere around there, uh, and is that they are some really fun lineups. Like, not, like, you know, obviously very different standards, you know, from the four teams being done here. That's in the next section. Don't worry, Fenerbahce fans. But, like, you know, I look at basketball as a neutral. I want to enjoy the basketball I'm watching. I look at this Fenerbahce roster, and I believe I will enjoy watching Fenerbahce. But also, you're, a lot of you are Fener fans. You want to see that, but you also want to see Fener win. Before I get to that, huge shout out for what you all did for your two home games in the playoffs last year. That was so cool to see uh, on screen. I mean, I could only imagine what it would have been like in, in, in the arena. But you guys, those playoff, uh, you know, TFOs and stuff that you did... That, that, that rocked, so much love from this corner to you. I just banged on the mic, so sorry about that sound pop that probably just hit there. But yeah, that worked. But yeah, so this could be a really fun team to watch. I mean, it's not that complicated. So let's get to the part that could be complicated. Ooh, how good will Fenner be? So yeah, that's everything we knew before Boban came up. So let's just put Boban into the how it looks part. I still largely agree with everything I said before. I just now think that the use of double bigs is going to be even more of a thing that they can do with this Fenerbahce lineup. Also, I mean, he's Boban, he adds depth, he's going to give you some more crucial minutes in the front five. So your core regular, regular basketball lineup five, still going to be fine. So, yeah, not a whole lot thrown in with these double Boban ed ed edits, but still, it's wild. So now, actually on to the third segment. Yeah, the outlook. So, I first off, I want to talk about the retentions, because like I said at the top, we have the ins, we have the outs. The retentions, I really, really like them. I really do. Like, Nigel Hayes-Davis is just a stud. Like, you know, he's repping this uh, wonderful you know, world of men with names beginning with N 
and having double barrel surnames. Uh, you know, Nigel Williams Goss, obviously there. Nickel Alexander Williams, the other. You know, so Nigel Hayes Davis, repping the repping the end double barrel really well. And honestly, he's just great. Uh, Sirtak Stanley is an extremely reliable baller. Like I have just, you know, since first seeing this guy would have been what, 2017 Eurobass is when I first got eyes on this guy. And uh, I have just fallen in love with the way this guy works because you know exactly what you're going to get out of him every night. And he is rarely oh, deviates from what you expect from Sirtak Stanley. And when you can have that at the five, that's huge. Like, he's not going to be the guy you're playing in the last three or four minutes. But, like, first three quarters, early in the fourth, you know you can log heavy minutes with him. He's going to get it done. You're probably going to have a more dynamic lineup at the, at the end of a game. But he's just reliability. And, like, point guards know what they're getting with him. Like, there was a player who played rugby. I know Sport Fenerbahce fans really are familiar with for Ireland called Gervin Dempsey back when I was in my early 20s. Uh, into my late 20s, possibly. But, anyway, Gervin... The whole thing with Gervin, why he was such a fan for Irish players, he played a position called fullback, and was that you knew what you were getting every time. Like he was captain reliability. He was 7.5 out of 10 every day. And Sir Attack is the same. He's a 7.5 out of 10 every day. He'll give you the odd 8, he'll give you the odd 7, but he's not going too far low. He, he might get a 10. But you're never getting this. You're never getting a five point five. You know, maybe a six, but really unlikely. You know, so you know he's always in that really good, good, good spot. So yeah, love shirt that guy coming back. Bevera, which is only getting better. Like you know, he's like blossoming into this great baller. Uh, as things look, which is this is the mad part to me. Marco Guderich and Dijon Pierre are almost guys who used to break glass in terms of emergency. That won't be what happened, but when it happens, but when you look at the lineup, the roster, like they could they could be in that luxury position of being the emergency glass dudes, which is kind of wild. So you pair all that with the new arrivals. And you can tell I'm working off notes here, because for roster breakdowns, I do need to have notes with me. Like when I'm talking about an issue, I can spit, but I gotta, you know. I gotta work off the notes here, so I'm giving you the accurate stuff, or my accurate view. Sorry, you pair this with the new arrivals. It's clear Fenner belong in the upper echelon in your league. I've got like three tiers. There's the top five. There's the bottom three. There's the ten in the middle. Fenner belong in the top five. You're you're in that. And those top five for me are the teams who are locks for the playoffs. Those are Olympiacos, Panathinaikos, Monaco, Real Madrid, and of course your good selves. Right now, for me, I have you on the. A uh, good side for a home seed. Uh, obviously, though, top five, I believe they're really close in standard all five teams. So I'm not going to absolutely swear on anything that that's the case. But yeah, like they are like if you're in top five, you're in conversation for a home seed because four of those five teams are going to be home seats. So that's great. So yeah, I, I really am very high on this Fenner team. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy watching them. Obviously, Fenner fans, I believe, will enjoy watching them. But I believe a lot of neutral fans are going to really enjoy checking out Fenner games when their team isn't playing, uh, which, you know, it's always nice. Uh, great for me as a guy watching basketball. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to be fantastic to watch. Obviously, enjoy the season. And we'll see how far you go. We'll see if we meet you all at the Final Four. Very, very plausible to me. Very plausible. Uh, like, you know, certainly in that conversation and towards the higher end of it for being there. Uh, and, yeah, who knows after that? Because Final Four, you know, single elimination ball. It's a totally different sport, effectively. Well, not a different sport, but it's a totally different dynamic. Like, you know, regular season, it's about best, you know, who's best cumulatively after 34 games. Playoffs, it's best of five. You've got chances for a mulligan. There ain't no second chances in the final four. And, you know, it didn't work for Fenner last time. Could work next time. Who's to say? But anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, and I really do hope you have, uh, please subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe as well. We're trying to obviously build this channel up as the season goes by. And uh, yeah, we have videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, this is obviously the Wednesday video if you're checking it out as it, as it drops. Uh, there'll be another video up on Friday. And we are getting disturbingly close to our Motherload Power Rankings video, uh, which is dropping on the 30th or the 1st. I've forgotten exactly which day it is. Whatever the Monday is, basically, uh, is when the Power Rankings uh, for the preseason will drop. Uh, I've got It's very easy to do Power Rankings in preseason. Working out a fair way of doing Power Rankings when everybody's playing each other is much harder. So I'm going to try and work out some sort of formula for what the Power Rankings in season will be. They won't be weekly. They'll be monthly. Just telling it out. And uh, I don't know what I'm telling you now. I should tell you in the Power Rankings video. But anyway, listen, I've stayed too long. You, though, however, have been wonderful guests. And, of course, until next time, I will see you soon.